Welcome, this is Tennessee End of Course Algebra 1 Practice Test Number 3, Question Number 57. Uh, this one probably has two dots in front of it on the original site or on the playlist, and that's because this question is an SPI, which is a standard, that the state of Tennessee is not going to use anymore. The reason is Tennessee is shifting over to Common Core assessments next year, and it's trying to align its curriculum so they're similar, they become more similar over time and then go full on next year. Uh, this question represents the old stuff that we did when the EOC first came out. So this type of question shouldn't be on the test. It says so on their website where I got this practice test. So you can choose to continue watching just in case it is, or you could just move on uh, as you practice for your uh, EOC. Anyway, the question says what happens to the graph of y equals 12x plus 5 when the equation of the line becomes y equals 4x plus 5? Now, this is a question that has a few components to it that matter. Number one, the most important thing is perspective. And what I mean is, I have to look at this through the lens of this graph. I have to see how it changes from that graph, not to that graph. It's important that I'm looking at it from the right direction. Um, the generic formula, of course, for this is y equals mx plus b. I'm going to look at what changed in this this is my change. So the change is a slope change. If these numbers had changed my intercepts, the graph would look exactly the same in terms of the slope. It would just cross the y-axis at a different spot. So it would raise the entire graph up or down based on that. What it's going to change here is the steepness of the graph. So for my first one, this one, I'm going to sort of do a, I'm sure, a mediocre job of drawing these out. Start to fade off there at the top, I just realized. Oh well. Now, uh, I'm going to draw the first one in green here. So my I tend to circle the term with x and whatnot in it, so my slope and my x, just to show me that y equals plus 5. That's my intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here. Now I need to, based on my slope, go up 12 and over 1. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and over 1. So right here. Now this is a ridiculously steep graph to have to graph, just because a uh, slope of 12 is a lot. So I'm going to try my best to sort of make it as close to a slope of 12 as I can by hand, because I can't find my giant ruler that I usually do this with, my yardstick. So there's the first one. On the other side of it, y equals 4x plus 5 is l much less steep. So still plus 5 would be my cross point, but I'd only go up 4 and over 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. And you're welcome to graph these in a calculator, but I felt like for once I just really didn't want to. Plus I couldn't do the two colors thing and sometimes it's harder to sell the argument. Now as you can see, it's still kind of steep. And I might have made it, based on the way my units are set up, make it look more steep than it should be. But it's much steeper than a 1x scenario. But it's less steep than the ridiculous 12x is. So I should Ha say some statement about it gets less steep from here to here. Uh, less steep. So in the first choice, A, the line is four times as steep. That is not true even a little bit. It doesn't get steeper, it gets less steep as I transition from 12x to 4x. That's an important component here, the perspective thing again. Now, if I was going from 4x to 12x, it might be a consideration that I would make. Like, yeah, it got steeper, but it didn't get steeper going from 12x to 4x. In the next one, it has a fraction, so I'm going to keep that one because that sort of indicates it gets divided in some way. Uh, C is also out. It's not getting steeper, it's getting less steep. So it's either B or D. So I'm going to make a comparison statement between the two slopes. Now, I'm going to sort of divide 12 by 4 and it's going to give me 3. What that means is it's 3 times less steep uh, in the second graph than it is in the original graph. But I can't think of it from that perspective. I need to think it starts here and goes here. So I need to do 12 times 1 third. 
12 times 1 third does give me the 4x that I need, so my answer to this question is D. I need to multiply 12 times 1 third to show you the new graph of 4x. So that's number 57. It's all about perspective, and it's really easy to get that one wrong, and maybe one of the reasons they stopped doing it, but probably not. They just found harder things to do. I don't know. Anyway, that's it.